It's the Cambridge Half Marathon recap video. So in this one, I'll be telling you about the course, what to expect, how the race went itself, and what was going through my mind at different points, and then some reflections on the result and what it means to me. Plus, at the end, I'll be telling you about a special event I'm running to today, and also two races I've just booked. Both have PB potential, but they're very different distances. So let's roll the intro and dive right into it. Hello, I'm Nick. Firstly, if you haven't watched my Cambridge Half Marathon race video yet, please do watch that first because there's going to be spoilers aplenty from here on in. So that said, what a race, what a race. It was incredible for me. I managed to do one hour, 23 minutes, 21 seconds, a massive PB of almost four minutes. So, so pleased with that. So I'm gonna take you through a bit of a Nick Bester style video. If you watch any of his on YouTube around sort of what's going through my mind at different points of the race, I've got a bit of new footage which I can show you as part of that as well. So before the race, there was a few discussions about what pace people were gonna go off at. We had a group of about five, six Spartans all close together uh, in, in the starting pen. So me and Mike decided to go off together, aim for one hour 24 pace. Stu, we thought would be similar, but likes to set off a bit quicker. So he, we let him go. And then also Matthew, uh, decided to give it a go as well. So there was me, Mike and Matthew, who we were all running together at Cambridge Half Marathon last year. So that was really nice to have their company again. So race itself, gun goes off. Then that first mile, I could not believe how packed it was. I really struggled to sort of find a consistent pace straight away lots of weaving in and out. I didn't find this last year, um, where I think I started on in a kind of second first wave, if that makes sense. And we were a bit closer to the front, but also we were running sort of 6.50 a mile pace, 4.15 a K, which is one hour 30. So I think more people were setting off at around that pace rather than this, this effort we were going for 124. So, I think that meant it felt more difficult because people were running slightly, very slightly slower, but just felt we were weaving a bit. So first mile uh, over 6.30, sort of five, six sec seconds down. No panic, obviously it's a long race, but yeah, it was very busy at the start, more so than I can remember last year. And this race is stacked by the way. The, the first mile finished in under one hour and five minutes and the first female in under 112 so incredible times so so fast and it seems to be getting faster and faster every year so just rolling through to that first 5k so all about settling into the race what was going through my mind i was feeling I was feeling good like i was probably working a little bit harder than i wanted to by doing some weaving around yeah just managed to settle it settle into it in a mile two mile three three to five k so the first official split for 5k 1948 i felt it pretty good which is wild if i'm honest but more of that later on that 5k you're going through the sort of heart of cambridge there's so much support out on the course it is incredible it's a brilliant atmosphere particularly for a half marathon. Then mile four, this felt a bit different to when I did it the previous year, 2023. But you go through Trinity, Kings and Queen's Colleges. And underfoot, there's this very fine stone kind of shingly effect. It's actually quite difficult to run on. So mile four was actually my slowest mile of the race. Uh, I think it was about 6.33. 
yeah you just lost a bit of momentum trying to get through that shingle but you know it's over relatively quickly but just something to be aware of that your pace might slow if you're maintaining the same effort at that point then mile for five through to six still managed to keep that pace that we wanted to around 625 a mile 359 a k and it felt good at this stage i was mainly kind of setting the pace uh, sometimes switching with mike a little bit and then matthew just following us behind the official 10k split was 40.02 uh, i had it slightly different on my watch in terms of the 10k mark came up quicker and then it was quite a number of seconds about 20 seconds before then i, I actually hit that split mark so I had a bit of a moment there i was like oh okay my watch is saying something different it just alarmed me very slightly but as i said in the video we were still on pace hitting halfway and pretty much bang on the split i was looking for so yeah at that point as a water stop i think that's where we lost matthew i think he he, he knew himself that sort of sub 125 was going to be a push he did incredibly well last year to stick with us after doing a bit less trading um, so he couldn't quite hold that pace this time but still amazing effort to finish in one hour 27 just outside his pb so sorry matthew that we that you couldn't stick with us this time but yeah hats off to you for just pushing on through to the end so at this point in the race you've come out of the kind of the main city center starting to hit some country roads gets a bit quieter obviously in terms of crowds as well and it's really just about trying to lock in to that pace try and switch off a bit try not to use too much energy i took a gel at halfway my one gel of the race just to prepare me for that second half give myself a bit of extra energy and yeah we're still still feeling pretty good so at this point it gets into the business end of the race where you're not close enough to the finish that it really feels that close but you're over halfway so mile seven mile eight managed to keep that pace keep it consistent mile nine similarly but at that point hitting the mile nine mark i was like said to mike this is it this next mile it's probably the hardest in the race you can't going up trumpington road i think it is and it's a kind of steady climb it's not steep by any means but anything other than flat when you're running hard you notice so yeah it was really a digging moment part of the race i said to mike let's just let's just push on through this mile keep the pace as it is and then that will really set us up for the final 5k and that's what we managed to do we managed to in this steady climb just keep that pace going uh, and that felt pretty good i think it was around sort of mile eight mile nine that mike started to lead a bit more i think i was noticing i was feeling a bit more tired um, so i didn't say anything but i felt like he was perhaps pushing me a bit more of that stage to, to keep the pace and at this point i also want to just give a little shout out to a couple of people during the race that i don't think i've ever met in person but recognize me from the channel so firstly to kevin who at that point we were sort of on for a sub 125 which was his aim and he got it well done kevin for your sub 125 and also to mark who actually he was almost a former colleague of mine i used to be a journalist and just as he left the comedy newspaper stephen chartfordshire uh, i joined so we just missed each other but uh, clearly avid runner he did 125 as well fantastic effort so yeah thanks for the little hellos on the course as mike said that gives you one hell of an ego boost so cheers and then you've got the final 5k from 10 miles through to the finish and me and mike last year along with matt decided to pick up the pace at this point 
and really pushed on for those final three miles to get under 128 mark. And this year, me and Mike did exactly the same. We kind of always had it in our minds. It was kind of an unsaid thing that we were gonna try and push when we got to that final 5K. Mile 11, going a bit quicker, under 6.20 pace at this point. So low to mid 350s per kilometer. It's such a flat course, it really is. So that getting that mile 10 out the way is fundamental. We knew it was gonna be downhill overall from this point. So yeah, picked up the pace a bit and then final two miles, I remember Mike saying to me, use the crowd and he was absolutely right. Getting back into Cambridge, so mile 12 was 6.06 for the mile and we were going for it. There was kind of a bit of sort of rights and lefts uh, around this point and again I felt like Mike was taking more of the lead and I was just trying to stick with it. He might tell you different but I was definitely feeling like I could do the pace but he was it was him that was pushing it that's just how it felt for me uh, and then mile 13 we went for it even more the crowds really build up at this point you know the hard work is done and you just got to tell yourself don't stop now don't let off now you're almost there just keep it going keep pushing and at this point Stuart Archer, fellow villains, very Spartan. We were closing on him. We were closing on him quite fast. Throughout the race, you could kind of see him at different points up ahead. At this point where we started really pushing the pace, we were closing in. So, yes, Stuart, we were aiming for you. We were aiming for you. So mile 13, 602, really proud of that. Like fastest mile of the race pushing as hard as possible, whilst trying to keep that form, keep everything together, trying not to overthink it, let negative thoughts come in and just trying to crack on. And then difference for this year, I think, was a slightly less of a straight into the finish. So you kind of, you come around a bend as I am now. And, and the finish is, I think it's about, 0.1.2 at that point, similar to where I went to film at the finish. So you know the end is in sight and we just got out of that sprint finish at that point, just built slowly and uh, into the fives as we uh, tried to catch you at the very end. Me and Mike were determined to finish together this year as last year he just pulled up very slightly towards the end. Uh, having run together all the, way, all the way. Matthew did the right thing, turned around, stayed with him. But he said, Mike said, go ahead, go ahead without me. So I thought he was probably stopping and a bit selfish in that moment, but carried on. Turns out I was only two seconds quicker than him. So I really shouldn't have done that. Uh, but yeah, so we were determined to finish together. We did, we were kind of overtaking quite a lot of people in that home straight, finishing strong. And yeah, across the line, to so say it was a one, two, three, 21. Love that. And yeah, hugging Mike, just so thrilled to have been able to run with him the whole way. And then congratulating Stu, who did incredible, finished three seconds ahead of us. Uh, and absolutely smashed it. So, so yeah, that's that's kind of the walk through. Now for some reflections. Firstly, I am so chuffed with that race because it went exactly to plan. Like, it's not very often you can say that. Like, run the first 10 miles at 6:25, 59 per kilometer pace, and then just push those last three miles, 5k. That's what we did, averaging under 20 minutes for per 5k throughout the race. Put that into context. In September 2022, I went sub 20 just for the second time ever. Admittedly, it was 1907. 
and I was saving a bit because I had a marathon coming up. It's hard to believe to be honest that like in a year and a half I've managed to get so much faster having a 17 minutes 25 5k time which has then allowed me to build on that speed and endurance that means I can run four back-to-back -back sub 25k's it's wild like honestly I I struggle to get my head around that I really do I took four minutes off my PB in March 2022 to go one hour 34 then after doing a 131 half in November 22 I've gone another four minutes quicker at Cambridge half in 2023 127 16 and then I've gone almost another four minutes quicker than that this time 2024 to do 123 it's just the mind boggles I know what it is and I'll talk more about this in future videos around running easy and sort of building slowly and increasing mileage all the rest of it I'm just so pleased with how it's going right now and the hard work and listening to my body is really paying off so a few more shout outs because again Mike you're an absolute hero I could not have done that without you or if I could it would have been a damn sight harder I think you can't underestimate being able to run with someone all the way and how much difference that can make and I also want to just say some thank yous because it's not an Oscar speech I realise that but this was kind of the first time I was at a big profile race since starting the channel back in October 2023 we've just passed 300 subscribers to thank so thank you every one of you who has subscribed doesn't cost anything just means you get my videos pop up when they come out usually every Friday it was nice to see a few people that I really just met through the channel it's people like Andy Devine who managed to go sub 120 for the first time absolutely amazing stuff well done Andy uh, people like Jamie Rose who uh, we've started bumping into lots of local races together but I didn't know beforehand and yeah it's such a community and I'm really just loving sort of being part of it to be honest and and doing these videos and interacting with more people on Strava and Instagram and yeah it's just really special so that's the reflections at this point I just want to tell you where I'm actually running to so it's it's Saturday it's six days on from Cambridge half and I'm actually doing the long run today as I run Stevenage yesterday it was International Women's Day so my partner Georgie has organised an event through our club uh, just to mark that occasion so everyone's wearing purple green and white I've got a t-shirt to change into uh, and uh, yeah just celebrating women in running t-shirt we're wearing is run equal which is all about equalizing the distances I'll put a link in below to find out more about run equal and uh, yeah really looking forward to the event not actually going to probably do the workout on the track just going to keep doing my long run uh, but yeah we're gonna have cakes and we're just yeah gonna be celebrating the amazing women in our running club so looking forward to that and finally as promised a bit of an update on what's coming next so a couple of videos videos ago I talked about the trail marathon that I'd booked and some trail runs I was planning the lead up but I've also booked a couple of road races too so the next video is going to be me doing the Essex 20, 20 miles. Uh, never done this one before. It's five laps of Debden Airfield. And yeah, I think, I think I'm actually going to go for it because you always got to be careful if you're doing a 20 mile race during marathon training, that uh, you don't turn that into your race and you make sure you leave enough in the legs for the day itself. But because I'm not doing a road marathon running for a time right now 
I am quite tempted just to give it a go. Uh, just see kind of maybe what sub three I'm having pace feels like right now. So that one's the next one coming up. And then hot on the hills, it's gonna be Easter Friday. It's the Easter St. Albans 10K. And that is a fast course. It's one I did last year, got a new PB. 38 10 at the time I think I've gone slightly quicker since then but only very slightly so probably looking to go low 37s maybe even look at what the pace is for 36 minutes but yeah I'm gonna be going for it so that's a fast race still places available if you want to book into that one so both of those races I've done by Active Training World. So I said in a previous video that actually I'm an ambassador for them now. No payment involved or anything like that. Basically they're giving me free entry into any of their races this year. I'd be doing this in all the 10K anyway, but the Essex 20 definitely wanted to give a go. So uh, if you fancy either of those races, there's still places available. And uh, yeah, if you want to use my code, it's Nick Gill underscore 15, give you 15% off. So I don't get any money for that or anything, um, but given I'm getting these, getting to do these races for free, the least I can do is uh, make sure you guys get a discount as a result. So that's it for this one. If you've made it this far, thank you. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. Follow me as I continue to train for a sub three hour marathon. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.